my name is Tina, Tina from Hooping Wonderland. This is Ignite 2018 and my workshop, my hooping workshop was about legs and angles because Lisa was teaching a lot off body. Mm -hmm. I thought a lot uh, on body. So we started with knee hooping and we saw different techniques. So when we started from the waist, there are different options. If the hoop drops below uh, hip level, you start giving an impulse with the legs, two legs together, knees together. And what I do is bend and stretch to let the hoop go down. Different option is give an impulse with one leg. You can choose what leg. So one leg I keep straight, the other one is giving the energy. Or you can decide to do it with the other leg. Um, I would recommend to learn to do this because it gives you more time and it helped me a lot to take more control over the, to get more control over the hoop. So when the hoop touches my upper leg, I push and I bend my knee and then I stretch out again. Then the hoop turns again, comes to the other leg, I push and I stretch. Especially when you do this turning, it will give you more time. Same principles count when you want to go from the knees to the waist. So if I start turning, turning helps, and I push, I keep continue, I continue to give the same impulse, but I push a little bit more to the side, then the hoop will come up. So I push outwards. And here we wiggle, and then the hoop is in my waist. I totally recommend to do this with both legs. So you can kick the hoop up. And I explained, I hoop to the left. So what I do is I make small circles, and in between my legs come together again. So I push to the left. If you hoop to the right, you do the opposite. So you make small circles. To the right, make sure that both knees um, come together in between. And what we did next. <laughs> okay, then um, we saw how to get out of this. When you don't know, if you can't get the hoop up from the knees to the waist, then you're stuck. And a nice way to get out of this is to step out and turn. I hoop to the left, I take out my left leg, I wait, and I grip the hoop with my left hand, knuckles up. I take my leg out, and I can go off body. So this, the, um, to get one leg out, you give one big impulse to the back, push, take your leg out, and when the hoop I want to put down my uh, left leg. When the hoop is on my right, that's the right timing to put this leg down. And then you switch. So what happens is, take your leg out, put it down, switch. And then you turn in your hooping direction to give you more time to grip the hoop. So I take my leg out, out, switch, grip. If you hoop to the right, you take out your right leg, the hoop is turning to the right. You wait till the hoop is on your left side. You put your left foot down. This one comes up and you grip the hoop with your right hand and then you go into off body hooping. Um, 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 let me see. So it's important to find the right timing to do the switch. You can also <laughs> you can also decide to take your leg out and immediately immediately put your foot down, and then you will have the right timing too. So it's out, step, turn. Then we had if the hoop comes below the knees, drops below the knees, 
You can also continue hooping on your calf. Down. And you see I'm standing on my toes. Two options. I'm standing on my toes and I go left, right. Or I decide to keep one leg straight and I give an Im impulse to the outside with one leg to keep the hoop turning. So it's dropping. This is option number one. This is option number two. And the most important thing is to keep the hoop spinning. Even when the hoop drops to your ankles, you can continue. Voila. If the hoop comes um, on your ankle level, you can also decide to take these steps. So what I do is this with straight legs to give an impulse to the hoop. And the exciting thing about the step out and turn is that the hoop doesn't need to be on your knee level to step out and turn. As long as the hoop keeps spinning, you can take your leg out and continue. So you lock the hoop here or the heel and then you grip. I forgot one thing. To come, when you want the hoop to uh, travel to your waist again, there's also the circus way and instead of giving impulse like this, you go wiggling. So I really keep my body straight and I wiggle from left to right. So I give an impulse to the outside to get the hoop up. You can also do this to let the hoop drop to the knees. Circus way. And now we go up again. Yes. Let's see. We, oh sorry. We had the leg breaks for the more advanced people. If you want to start the leg breaks, remember the way you, uh, the direction that you normally hoop in. Because I want, I hoop to the left. I put my left leg in so that if my leg breaks, um, if there's something wrong with it and it switches to a wedgie, I'm in my dominant wedgie position. So let's start. The uh, toes on the floor, heel off the floor. And the only thing I do, I keep space in between my legs. So when you do the wedgie, you do this. Now it's just getting your heels off the floor like this. And you really want the hoop to come as far as possible. So I try to bend my knee as much as I can and the hoop will break here. If I keep my knees too close, this will happen. And then you go into a wedgie. Um, yeah. yeah, that's it. When you want to start the leg breaks and you come from knee hooping, I take my I hoop to the left, I take my right leg out, and what you want to do is you put down the leg that you pulled out, you put it a little bit further to the back, you bend your knee, and then you can start the brakes. If you hoop to the right, oops, you take your left leg out, put your foot a little bit further away, and then you can continue the breaks. We also saw the kickstart. When I hoop to the left, I put the hoop on my right foot. I put my left foot in and I kick the hoop against my heel and against my ankle and it will give the hoop some speed to, to turn. If you hoop to the left, uh, to the right, you put the hoop on your left foot and you put in your right foot and you kick it. Then the next step is I hoop to the left. 
So it's right foot, left foot in. I kick it, and then I'm going to bring the hoop on my knee level. And what I do is I kick, uh, I put my left foot in, I kick, and when the hoop is at this point, when it's spinning, I uh, step in and I lift the hoop up to the knees. And I really stay close with my foot. If you do this and you kick it, the hoop will be lost. So it's up and then you continue. When you um, picked up the hoop, start turning and it will make life easier. So again, I hoop to, to the left. Left foot goes in, I kick it, lift up, and I start turning. That's for the kick up. We also uh, saw the kick up, duck in, and wedgie up. <laughs> So I hoop to the left, the hoop is on my left foot. I keep my hands ready if you want to cheat a little bit. So I kick the hoop up, my leg goes in, and then the hoop needs to flip over. My left leg hooks in from inside to the outside, and my right leg will give a swing to the back to generate some, some power, and then the hoop will come up. So the last part is a wedgie. Um, most important thing is that when this is the starting position for a wedgie, if you hook to the left, stick your left foot in from the front, put your foot down, and then we end it like this. Most important thing is that you leave space in between your knees and that you lift your heel towards your butt. Like a flamingo, bam this and make sure to swing if you hoop to the left make sure to swing your hips to the left if you hoop to the right make sure to make the flamingo and swing to the right so for the right uh, for the hoopers who uh, hoop to the right it's on your right foot catch you let the hoop drop hook in with the right foot you give the swing with the left foot, and then the hoop will come up. Uh, 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 let's see. Hmm? Right, can I Ah, sorry. That can be that I'm going to This was a cheating version. You can also try to do it with no hands, so no grip. So you kick the hoop up. The hoop flies over and you immediately hook as the hoop one wants to flip over your head like this. You hook in and you kick up. So, no hands. Up. That was the kick up. That was it. For, okay. the, for the knees. And then, <laughs> the last part we had angle hooping. Angle means you're going to put your body in this position, keep your knees bent, and if I want to angle hoop from the waist, I'm going to push the hoop up, and I, when, my, when I bend my knees, the hoop will be at its lowest point, so I can push the hoop up with, the back, uh, with my back. In the beginning, the hoop will turn to one side, to prevent that, you can switch from one leg to the other. You can do the, or you can jump. This is angle hooping earth, because you're looking towards the floor, towards the earth. So it's all from the knees. Forget about giving energy with the body. You just lock everything, make it straight, squeeze your butt. Make sure to contract your abdominals and push, push, push. Then we had angle hooping sky. Same thing, but then I will look to the sky. So all the energy comes from the knees and I want to push my belly button towards the sky. So when the hoop comes to the front, I push up. up. This is sky. 
And if you want to do it on the waist, on the chest, on the shoulders, it's always the same thing. You give energy with the knees. Knees, knees, knees. My arms aren't doing a thing. Then we had to switch from earth to sky. And I will first show you how to turn uh, if you hoop to the left. So if you hoop to the left, it's the left foot that turns first, straight line. Then the right follows, like this. If you hoop to the right, it's the right foot first, then the left. To make sure that you generate or create some time in between the switch from earth to sky, you give one extra push and it will make life easier. So I'm hooping earth on the waist. I hoop to the left so my left foot will uh, start first. I give one extra push down and then I turn. And then you generate some time to go into the right angle, push up, switch, and find the rhythm of the hoop again. So this is earth again. Same thing on the shoulders or on the chest. You push down, make sure to stay in an angle. Sky, push up, turn, and continue. For the more advanced hoopers, I gave uh, something extra. That's, um, you start from, we started from spinning on the elbow backwards. I hoop to the left, so I use my right arm. If you, right to, uh, if you hoop to the right, it's your left arm that you will use. And make sure to keep the hoop behind you. And to keep the upper arm in a horizontal position. When the hoop touches my, the back of my upper arm, now, 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 that's the moment that the hoop will come up. And we have the opportunity to stick our head in. In the beginning, avoid giving energy with the arm, but with the legs, with the knees, to give the push. Now, 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 you put your head in, catch the hoop again, and then you can go into a weave or whatever you want to do. So what happens is, when the hoop touches my triceps, then I duck in, the hoop, my elbow will stay inside of the hoop, the hoop will touch this part of my body, then it will give enough, it will get enough energy to swing up, and my left hand will catch in front of, uh, above my head to get the hoop out. So again, here, in, 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 touch, catch, swing out. If you hoop to the right, it's your left arm. You duck in and you catch with the right arm. You can also decide not to go off body but stay on body. And that's when, at the point that the hoop touches my neck, I turn and I go into angle hooping, neck hooping or shoulder hoop, whatever that you want to do. So it's now, 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 duck in, turn, and go angle hooping. That was it. Good. Lots of love and light. See you next year. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>